So anyway, if you go for the white box solution, which is my recommendation, then um, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. Because the, in the rest of the video I thought we'd actually have a look at the original power supply and see if we can rectify the problem. Um, however, I just want to put in some uh, warnings and cautions here that um, in some jurisdictions um, fixing um, devices with um, high voltage or mains voltage present is um, not authorized for normal people. It's you have to be an authorized repair person um, of one kind or another. So as I said, in your local jurisdiction you have to make sure is, is it even permitted for you to um, try and fix it. And more importantly is you need to know what you are doing. So um, not recommended to enter into a device where there's both primary and secondary voltages uh, exposed on the same circuit board. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, then you could very much hurt yourself. Uh, when it comes to measuring power supplies, I mean, using a multimeter, I consider relatively okay. But if you are going to connect in an oscilloscope, uh, I wouldn't recommend it if you do not really do not know what you're doing. Um, and also, if you're going to use an oscilloscope, then I recommend that you use a mains isolation um, transformer. Uh, and if you don't know what a mains isolation transformer is, then <laughs> don't, don't try and measure the power supply with an oscilloscope. Uh, anyway, that said, I um, thought we could actually dig into um, the reasons why I think in this specific case it would, might be worth trying to fix because the only rail that um, the, the only voltage that's not correct is the minus 12 volts and um, so let's take a little look so there's been an attempt to document the Amiga power supply semi you know unofficially and um, to create a schematic and then a board layout and so forth and and, and, and it's very clearly stated here that you can't really trust that it's um, to be accurate but um, let's say for our purposes um, we look at the schematic diagram then um, basically what we're looking at is we're looking at this 12, minus 12 volt regulator here since all the other voltages are okay then I think that it might be worth trying to um, change out this um, minus 12 volt regulator so anyway, um, it's off finally. Mains plug is out. So take. Just need a standard screwdriver. I said this one only had three screws in it. So. And then, of yeah, if if one was going, if the power supply was completely dead and you didn't get any secondary voltages, then there's a fuse that you can check. So now we have to be a bit careful. And I think 
hasn't actually got that big caps in it. There are a few in there, but they're not very large, so take that out. Not recommended to touch the circuit board. Don't know what potential that is on either. Is the transformer bolted to the Oh it's one assembly unit so oh, comes all out. I can just Yeah look at that one can take it over. So there. Best idea since this is just sitting on it. <laughs> it's just sitting in there, so now it's crushing the board. So let's put it that way around. Right? We can see most of it. So those are the main two caps, or three caps one needs to be worried about. It could contain voltage that and then I think that the this will be ground because it's so then the so there's two there's probably the, that's one regulator and then there's another one okay that's got a lot of feet in it and then there's one back there what that multi-legged component is. Just gonna have to look at the diagram. Okay, that could be the optocoppler that has three, four, five legs. Now why would that be connected to the cooling? So I don't know. I did warn that this may be, the schematic might not be um, for this this exact board or implementation because I do know that there are several implementations of this power supply so that one has to, um, has to be a bit careful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just measure the voltage on the capacitor. Pastors. Let's see if there is actually any voltage. Seems to be bad news. The um, power supply that I have is definitely not the same as the power supply in those schematics. So, but I think that the concept of having a minus 12 volt re uh, regulator might still be, and I can see something that might be, but it's uh, as you saw the heatsink that covers pretty much everything. So, I'm just going to try and get the heatsink off and. Um, See if I can get at those uh, to look at uh, those components and see which one is the uh, 12 volt re minus 12 volt regulator. Well, my analysis so far is that somebody beat me to it and um, was going to do the same thing I did. So to get to the 
voltage regulators, which are one is on the wall, and then there's one standalone, I think. So those are probably the voltage regulators. Um, <laughs> that they tried to get this screw out here and failed. So they they actually ruined the head of the screw. And then they probably just, uh, yeah, gave up and said, ah, whatever. Don't care. Put it, put it together again, you know, not caring to put all the, <laughs> all the case screws back in and then just call it a day. And ship it out to the customer. Um, so that's a bit of a dilemma, so I think that they still would have... I don't know. I, I have the white, bo white box power supply, but anyway, what I would have to then do if I was going to actually proceed with this is to actually drill that out. And then the the other regulator here, it uh, actually has a nut on it, so let's see. And then the one screw for the other component, I was able to unscrew. So, so then one could lift this away, and then one could get access to be able to read the codes on the and and be able to extract the regulators but the risk of course is that if you start drilling this then there's um, you know drill shavings and stuff or if you try to um, cut it off the same thing you get lots of crap even if you try and put tape and stuff so I, I don't know a bit of a tough call but that's what one would have to do at least so drill that out, um, unscrew the nut, get this out, check which regulator is the for the minus nine, uh, mi minus 12 volts, uh, just swap it out, um, power it up, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I would recommend abandoning it. Uh, this is really, as I said, the circuit diagram that I found on the net, but that definitely is not this. Um, and then it's actually the white box power supplies are relatively cheap, so I really don't see any um, any point in doing any more than that. So I think I'm going to actually junk this. I don't really think it's worth worth my time to try and fix it.
Wow. I think I caught it. It came out. Wow. So I just destroyed the screw there and then used the used this one and then on the head and then it just broke off the head. So that's loose there. Now it's just to turn around. It's going to have to have some serious air blowing to make sure there's no remnants of that drilling left. there, that one or that one. Just my volt regulator. Yeah, with a protection protective backing one has to remember it. That insulates it from that. Yeah, exactly. It's a full insulation package. So this one is isolated. No, oh, don't recognize that. And that's definitely not a regulator. It's only got two legs. And then that one. That one has three legs. And again, it's got this glue gunk on it. Work and get rid of that. So actually, the 12 volts might be this one here because it's the white cable that goes. I'm assuming that the um, black one is ground and then the red one is plus 5 volts. And there should be more cable. Wait a second. Okay, this brown. I have to actually 
check. What is that? Yep, white is the minus 12. So that could be, but I can't see any code on it. Very hard to, to see in that small little space what that is. So I might actually have to take that out. Check the check the code. So anyway, this turns out to be. I don't know if I can see it in the video here, but it's a seven eight twelve. So that's a positive twelve volt um, regulator. And the way they've been, the trick they do with this, um, when you want to use it as a negative volt. Um, negative minus 12 volt regulators is you um, you actually um, you ground the input and then you put the negative voltage on the center and then you get the regulated negative voltage out of the output so it's a bit of a I don't know why they I mean there are dedicated negative volt regulators but I suppose they save a few cents by doing that trick and using a plus 12 volt regulator but anyway, the issue is that is, does this work, or is it broke? So anyway, I've set up, um, so it's going to be positive voltage in, of course, and then ground, and then we're measuring the output, so, so I'm just going to increase the voltage until we get some kind of a result. I have the current limiting on, so, so it's 5 volts. Eleven. Should stop at twelve. So that's sixteen volts going in and twelve volts coming out. So um, that doesn't seem to be a problem with the regulator. So took out some capacitors. Um, they all kind of measure out still okay, but um, with a little vari ah, there was a bit of variations in the actual microfarad value that's nominal on what actually was measured, but you couldn't really um, say that they were broken just by measuring the capacitance and um, but the, these measure out okay and they look clean at the bottom, but then these, this has got some blackness there 
that's definitely been leaking something. And this here shows signs of overheating if one looks at the side there. Plus I think one, yeah, this one was also, uh, maybe the person who opened the power supply has written B on it, so maybe they just said, ah, it's, it's, it's bad and, um, or they meant bad for the whole unit, but hard to say, but, but um, yeah. So I think this would probably the, I mean the next logical step in, in trying to fix this would be, it, it looks like the regulator's fine, so there's, there's no issue, so then it's a question of the, um, the switching power, I think it's got like two separate switching power um, subsystems combined with the transformer. Um, that actually generates all the voltages required. And without a circuit diagram, or not creating a circuit diagram, it's actually hard to figure out what the logic is. But anyway, changing out the capacitors probably wouldn't be such a bad idea. Whether it will actually start working after that is, yeah, it might, because, you know, cap capacitance. The thing is that the capacitance value might fail if they're under voltage. Or it might not actually, the, you know, the, the whole, um, you know, the capacitor might not actually be a pure, if, if it's leaking and stuff, then a capacitor might turn into, you know, resistance, inductance, capacitance, where the um, capacitance is, <laughs> the, you know, the minimum amount uh, of the value. So then it might actually... Um, thwart the whole yeah, it might become a, a filter or something in, in, in the circuit and then that could whole, screw the whole circuit up and then it might actually behave very strange so finally got the capacitors I must say that the delivery times from um, Chinese companies is increasing every month that goes by but anyway um, of course the, not all, all of these are going to be used but anyway, I need to, um, yeah, get all these soldered in and see if it actually helps to fix the power supply. So, i got the first capacitor in place. It's this one, 470 microfarad, 16 volts, and the negative pole is on here, right here, on this side. So, now to larger caps so that's that one and that one and then the negative pole is there and there uh, 2200 microfarads 35 volts however there are pictures where these are 40 volts but the, the ones that I yeah, took out they were 35 volts so it probably doesn't matter if they're 35 volts or 40 okay next one it's that one there and the negative pole is there. And um, it's 330 microfarads. And I used one with a rating of 50 volts. The original one that I took out was 40, but I couldn't find, couldn't order 40 volt caps. So the 50 volt was the closest one I could find. So, swapped up and installed one more. So that's that one. And the negative pole is over here. And this is 330 microfarads and 25 volts. So, it's the next one. And that's that one. And that's 330 microfarads and 50 volts. And then the negative terminal is on this side. So, it's the last one. It's this little one down here. And the negative pole is on this side. 633 volts and 10 microfarads. Anyway, <coughs> not to prepare the um, heat sink of it, so then I have to remember that this one, this component needs the um, insulation on it so it doesn't short circuit with the, uh, with the heat sink. And then otherwise, then I have to also fix this hole because that was when I, I drilled it out, so I have to drill another hole through there. Or open up that hole and put on another screw. 
it's probably not going to be possible to video putting this together because <laughs> this this is going to sit on top and cover everything so it can't see it see what's going on anyway. but um yeah i'll try and get this fixed so anyway now i got it all screwed together again i hope correctly and, um, now it's just to try and get it back into its box so anyway back in the box it was a bit of a struggle to get in but um, i think it's okay so winter time minus 17 celsius outside not that super warmer in the workshop <laughs> anyway i got it in a container so now we need to test if it's going to go bang or something yeah. let's see what happens now yeah. no bang yet that's what usually capacitors do if you have them the wrong way around or the whole thing's wired wrong Is the switch is in the on position. We'll just wait a while and see if something, some smoke comes out or some other ugly side effect. Be back. So it's been standing around for a while, so now I'm going to see if I can get these little voltage. So, what is it? Ground is in the corner. Five. So it seems like we haven't haven't fixed the um, minus twelve volt there. Also. That's a bit sad. Hmm. Oh, it wasn't the capacitor issue. So it's something else. That it's not working for. So anyway, here we are. Got it open again, and um. As we previously found out, this is a 7, 8, 12. And um, it's used um, for the negative voltage. And I was like, I did do some thinking. I thought, oh, you know, depending on how you connect in the terminals, the, maybe it actually works. So that was the way it was designed. So this would be an original component. But now I've actually, I did circuit diagram um, of the of the regulation circuit and actually no you if you I won't go too much into detail but if if you actually use the same pinout and then you plug in the seven eight fifteen then what you will end up with is 
an output voltage of minus 8 volts and that's actually what I measured so that explains why, why. so actually this has to be a uh, uh, 7912 so it has to be a negative voltage for a, a regulator so I, I don't know somewhere down the road somebody tried to <coughs> maybe it had a 7912 and then probably did and then they um, just put this one in as a, and then uh, noticed that or maybe I don't know I mean, minus 8 is still a negative voltage, but I mean, it's not minus 12, so maybe it actually had it working good enough. I mean, the tolerance, ah, I don't know. The tolerances of the Amiga when it uses minus 12, it could be very, uh, relatively large. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, replace it with a real 7912. And then, uh, I'm actually expecting it to work, so I'll just get this soldered in and then we'll measure it and see what happens. So, anyway, let's measure. Not the best place to have the meter, but it's hard to get it positioned correct. So, let's see. Inside. So slippery. Twenty. No. And then the output side. Oh. Twelve. Minus twelve. <laughs> it's actually from my angle. It's even harder to see the meter. Oh, but it does say minus. No, so anyway, I think we fixed that one. <laughs> That's just to put the whole thing back together again. So here we are with um, the test set up. So we've got a standard Omega 500 here, and then we have the power supply and the monitor. Ah, just the mouse. I have a kickstart disk also arrives. So we'll see if the uh, Power supply actually works. There. I see it's a bit, uh, sometimes a bit weird, but uh, you know you can't blame the power supply for that. Anyway, so let's see if it um, can power the boot process. As you see now, the monitor kind of stabilizes. It's it's strange. It, it can lose some synchronization sometimes, even if it's when it's displaying the workbench. It will suddenly just go black, black, and then you cycle through the inputs, and then you, you get the picture. <coughs> well, seems to be able to power the power the disk drive. And Keep the computer running at the same time. Oh, off the workbench. So, seems to work okay. I mean, of course, if one wants to verify that this is working, then one should actually leave it running overnight. So, so I'll be doing that. So I'll put it in the comments if if it explodes. <laughs> but actually, I don't think that it. Um, it's um, cleaned out, recapped, uh, minus 12 volt regulator changed. Uh, I did um, improve the soldering of some of the internal wiring, and then. Um, yeah, put it back together again, and then I added the um, uh, reply or added the screw that was missing. So I tried to find a screw that was 
as close as possible. Anyway, I um, hope you found this interesting. Usually, I don't recommend fixing power supplies. And um, definitely don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. Especially when it comes to measuring. Because there's, there's very little um, distance isolation between the main side and the um, low voltage side. So, yeah. So, one should always, uh, one shouldn't touch power supplies if one isn't exactly sure what one, how, how to go about it. And, and these are actually relatively cheap. I, I think I, since I had to buy more capacitors than, than what was needed, I think I probably spent, you know, with the delivery charges and, and, and stuff, I would, uh, kind of, kind of close to buying a, a, a new unit, so maybe not financial, but uh, at least the, this one end up being a brick of electronic waste. So. And um, now I have two Omega 500 power supplies, and the new one, I've, uh, I have one new one, and then I have this one, so then I can power both my Omega 500s at the same time, which can come in useful. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.